Hello my loves, Tony here from Teal Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel. So as you can see, we're getting one of the few sunny days that we get here in Michigan during the winter. So I'm soaking it all up and I thought today would be the perfect day to finally finish my 2023 temperature blanket. I really surprised myself by staying on top of this project all year long and now I only have one month left to finish it and then I need to handle all of these ends that I told myself I was not weaving in this year. Now that I've got an entire day free to wrap up this project, I figured we could do it together. Now if you've never heard of the concept of a temperature blanket, you're obviously new here so let me clue you in. A temperature blanket is a representation of the day's weather in crochet form. Each day you track the weather, it corresponds with a different color that you've assigned to a temperature range and then you put that into your project. You can do squares, you can do rows, you can do whatever makes your heart happy. I actually talked about the many different ways that you can format a temperature blanket in this video right here so if you haven't seen that before make sure you check it out. I personally am obsessed with temperature blankets and I've been making one every single year for the last five years. My very first temperature blanket was my Tunisian crochet temperature blanket made with Swish DK from We Crochet. My second temperature blanket also uses Swish DK, but for that one, I did granny squares on the bias. My third and probably most popular temperature blanket design is my linen stitch squares. And for that one, I used Cascade 220 Superwash Merino and it was perfect. And then last year, I took the plunge and got a custom dyed palette from Green Letter Day and did a linen stitch stripes, but in panels. And this year, I wanted to go all the way out of the box. So I did a fingering weight hand dyed palette with yarn from Sorella to make a Tunisian crochet chevron. This year's blanket is different than a lot of my past blankets in several different ways. First of which being that I did historical dates as opposed to current dates. So typically with a temperature blanket, you're going to start it on January 1st, going all the way to December 31st, tracking the current day's temperature and then putting that into your blanket. Well, instead, this time I did a historical date that was important to me, and that was the first year of my marriage, which started in March 2010. So my blanket so far goes from March 2010 all the way up to March 2011, but I've been married for 13 years, so I wanted to put 13 months on my blanket. So the very last month that I have to do is April 2011. To make my blanket, I am doing two days per row on my blanket. If you're familiar with Tunisian crochet, you know that each row has two passes, the forward pass and the return pass. So for my temperature blanket, the forward pass is one day and the return pass is a second day. Another challenge that I gave myself with this blanket was using fingering weight yarn. One of the biggest issues that people have with temperature blankets is that they can create a quite large blanket that might not be usable on a day-to-day -day basis. I wanted something a little bit closer to a throw blanket size. And since I already knew it was gonna be quite long for how many days I was putting into it, I wanted to go with a lighter weight yarn to end up with a smaller blanket. And kind of the last big difference between this blanket and blankets of past years is I've decided I'm not going to weave in any ends on my blanket this year. Weaving in ends is not something I loathe or despise, but for a project like this, you just end up with a lot of ends. So I wanted to try and find a more creative way to deal with those. And I've got a few ideas in mind, but I'll figure that out a little bit later. Now, if you're planning to hang out with me today, make sure you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel. And before we touch an ounce of yarn, we have to give some love to our cup of caffeine sponsor. I had to go with the big mug today because it's going to be one of them days. So today's cup of caffeine sponsor, Dang Near Brought Me to Tears. Thank you very much, Brian L. And when donating, Brian said, despite working on holiday projects that I am in love with, life had me in a funk this year. I found your channel and your videos and your sparkle has completely snapped me out of it. Thanks for reminding me to find my joy. Happy holidays. When I read that, I'm like, y'all give me too much credit, okay? <laughs> I'm so grateful to be in this space where I can just share my little corner of this crafty world with you guys. And the fact that you pull the joy out of it just like I have means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much, Brian, and to everyone who watches this channel, the amount of love that you guys give me, I can barely even handle it. <laughs> and I can't even put my gratitude into words. Seriously, it's been a stellar and gorgeous and fantastic year, and I'm so excited to bring more fun ideas to the channel next year. Now, if you enjoy my content and wanna support my channel, buy me a coffee. Who knows? I might shout you out in the next one. Now let's finish up this temperature blanket. I 
have to give so much love to the entire Sorella team, but especially to Ashley, the owner. Now, Ashley and I kind of came up in this yarn scene together, and it has been pure joy to see her business and her family grow and change. I was so happy when she agreed to be my tent blanket sponsor this year, and if you've ever gotten her yarns before, you already know why. So I sent her several inspo photos, and then she sprinkled her Sorella fairy dust all over the palette and really made it come to life. Now, make sure you stick around to the end to learn how you can win my entire 15 color palette but first let's take a closer look at all of the colors. Ashley gave all of these yarns super fun names but I wanted to play around with naming them myself so here's what I came up with. First we have Aubergine which is a dusty deep purple. Then there's Farah a mid-tone purple that leans warm. Next is Calypso a light teal blue shade. Here's Matisse the most perfect deep teal I have ever seen. Next is Glacier an icy blue that plays beautifully with this entire palette. Then there's Dirty Martini an off-white inspired by concrete. It's followed followed by Almond, a neutral white that looks like latte foam. Now no TL Yarn Crafts palette is gonna be complete without a golden yellow, and that's how we get Goldenrod. Next up is Copper Rose, a dusty brick color. It's followed by its more pigmented counterpart, Bordeaux. Dark Coral comes next, giving us an intense grapefruit shade. Then we have Contessa, a warmer rosy red. This is Pearl, the perfect warm white with pink undertones. And you can really see that pink when you hold it next to Almond. Heading into our tan colors, we have Chino, a mid-tone khaki brown. And we finish up with Stormy, a color that rests somewhere between gray and brown. Now with this many colors on the go for my 2023 temperature blanket, staying organized is super duper important, but honestly not as complicated as it's been in past years. First, let's start with how I've been storing my yarn. Mm, very professional, right? I took one of the boxes that my book comes in, I cut the tops off, and I just put the yarn in here. Reduce, reuse, recycle, right? So I have my colors in order from coolest up to warmest, and then as colors ran out, I would just restock them. Now when it comes to my temperature blanket, I always have one hook assigned to the blanket, and this year it was my gold Sorella interchangeable Tunisian crochet hook. Ashley and the team actually sent the set of these metal Tunisian crochet hooks to me when they sent all the yarns for my temperature blanket. So it's kind of nice to have just one package with everything I'd need for this year's project. Now when they came out, these hooks only came with fixed cords, which was fine. I had some cords in my stash that I was able to use. But once the swivel cords did come out, I affixed one to my temperature blanket immediately. And I'm really glad that I did because the other cords that were included, I totally lost them, but I still have this one and it matches the set perfectly and it works really nicely. I've had this five millimeter Tunisian crochet hook attached to my temperature blanket all year long. Another piece of my organization system when I usually do a temperature blanket is a notions pouch. Usually it'll have a tapestry needle to weave in ends, scissors to cut yarn, but I actually didn't need a notions pouch this time because I'm not weaving in any ends and this yarn is thin enough that when I reach the end of the row and need to cut the yarn, I can just break it with my hands. I keep my entire creative life organized on my iPad and the app that I use for taking notes on my blanket and all my other designs is called Notability. My very first step is to clean up my workspace and then I need to fill out the dates for the month that I'm planning to work on. Next, I go to wunderground.com, which is where you can access historical weather data. I navigate to the month and the year that I'm stitching on, and then I start writing the high temperatures for that month. From there, I can reference my color gauge to see what colors go with those historical temperatures. Now, I'm really, really excited about the month ahead because we've got a lot of variation going on. We had temperatures ranging from the low 30s to the low 70s, and that means we get to crochet nine different colors in this month alone, making the last month of my blanket also the most colorful. So now we've got all the prep done. We know exactly what colors we need and what order they're going in. So it's time to find a cozy spot on the couch and get stitching. Let's go. While I'm stitching along, I wanted to share something with you that has completely changed my relationship with my temperature blanket. We're all friends here, so I can be honest with you and say that sometimes I am completely unmotivated to work on my temperature blanket. In past years, I've gone months and months without touching it, preferring to work on something brand new or even going to super old projects instead of touching my blanket. But this year I stayed on top of my temperature blanket, dropping no more than two months behind throughout the entire year. And the reason is I personalized. 
this blanket. It used to be that the thrill of just working with a new yarn or a new design was enough to get me through a project, but now I just need a little bit more encouragement to get to that finish line. Making this blanket a celebration of my marriage, of all that my husband and I have grown through in the last 13 years really had me excited to pick up this project during my free time. When I ask for questions about temperature blankets, the main one that comes up is staying motivated throughout the year, and I really think that I've cracked the code. If you're planning to tackle a temperature blanket, find a way to make your project special. Are you making it for someone or to remember or celebrate someone? Are you using a yarn that you spun or dyed, or maybe it was given to you by somebody special? Sure, it sounds a little touchy-feely, but motivation really is a feeling. It's a desire to push forward for this bigger purpose. So I considered that motivation when planning my temperature blanket, and I think that strategy could work for you too. Hey babies. Okay, so we are back in the office because we're making really good progress on our blanket. At this point, I only have 12 rows left. Now I did misspeak earlier. I am putting 13 months on my blanket, but my brain didn't calculate how many months would be 13 properly. So I said I was working on April 2011. It's actually March. So working from March 2010 through February 2011 is 12 months and then doing March 2011 is actually 13 months. Duh. Now speaking of the movie that I was watching, it is Christmas time and I try my best to get into the Christmas spirit by watching some Christmas movies. So one of my favorite singers, Brandy, came out with a new movie on Netflix called Best Christmas Ever. Now I had very high hopes. I knew it was gonna be kind of like corny, Hallmarky type, but this was, <laughs> oh, this was especially bad. Now I don't wanna give too many spoilers. So if you haven't seen it and you plan on watching it, just skip to about here, okay? So then I won't ruin it for you. So for everybody else, the premise is you've got this grinchy lady who doesn't like her old friend from I think college, who seems to have this very perfect life that she talks about in her Christmas cards every year. So the grinchy lady accidentally shows up on this girl's door who she does not like, and through some series of events has to spend Christmas with her and her family. So she gets through some of the jealousy and frustration that she has about this woman because clearly what else could it be but jealousy and she finally gets into the Christmas spirit by the end everyone is friends and they're loving on each other and there's this big community event that goes off without a hitch and everybody believes in the spirit of Christmas again now I'm all for your Christmas family movies but can we all agree that they're just a little bit boring even when you try to infuse some of that Christmas spirit and Christmas magic into it it just ends up feeling a little cringy and fake there are definitely some Christmas movies that I like and I continue to go back to the the Grinch, obviously, live action with Jim Carrey. Oh, it has my heart. One of my favorite movies ever. The most recent classic that I've added to my collection is Violent Night. So that one came out last year and stars David Harbour as a very grumpy Saint Nick who has to save the night from some very, very bad guys. Now, I thought that was going to be corny too, because sometimes Christmas slash action can go very left. But somehow this movie ends up being funny and incredibly violent and action filled with a really nice ending. I don't know exactly what the formula is, but I could watch that movie every night until Christmas. After watching all of the nicey nice stuff going on in Best Christmas Ever, I had to break up some of the monotony. So I started watching Love Has Won, The Cult of Mother God. That one's on Max, which is formerly HBO Max. I don't know why they changed the name, but whatever. I've only watched one episode so far, but it's essentially about this woman who starts a cult and they end the first episode on how she might still be around if it wasn't for the last guy that she chose to be Father God. I am completely enamored with this idea of cults because it's such a loose definition, but you kind of know one when you see one. And this was absolutely a cult. Now, about this temperature blanket, here's the issue. I did have to turn my overhead light on because we are literally chasing sunlight right now. It is about 325, which means I have maybe an hour and a half of sunlight left. I kid you not, it is pitch black by 10 after five. And with that last hour and a half, I have a lot of things that I still need to accomplish, one of which is walking my dog. So instead of continuing on to the last few rows of my blanket, I really wanna square away my final plan for these ends. I have three ideas in mind. One is fringe, one is twisted fringe, and one is braided fringe. The idea being that we'll have these long tendrils kind of coming down the side of the blanket. I'm going to clear off my desk and let's practice a few of these different fringe types so we can land on the final one.
Okay, so I played around with the design a little bit. I tried all three different fringe options and lo and behold, the twisted fringe is my absolute favorite. This is a fringe that I've used before. So I know it's something that I love, but I wanted to try and branch out of my comfort zone and try some different fringe options. I've done just free fringe before where you just kind of gather it at the top and let the tendrils go where they may. But it's my guess that if I have an entire side of my blanket that's just fringe, it's just gonna get in the way and look really messy. I tried the braided fringe as well. And as much as I like it, it doesn't have the volume and the fluffiness that you get from the twisted fringe. And also it's gonna take me a whole lot longer. I'm just not a very fast braider. So twisted fringe it is, but that is a lot of twisted fringe <laughs> that I have to do. Here's the plan. I'm going to work on more of this offline after I take Pepper for a walk. We'll check in for the final reveal in the morning. The next day. Oh, good morning, babes. Happy, happy day. Good to see you. So yeah, we've made some progress. So I was working on this yesterday while watching a lot of Drag Race All-Stars. Thankfully that got me through a lot of what I was planning to do here, but I did come to the understanding that like finishing is everybody's least favorite part of a project, but for something this huge, the finishing is almost its own separate project. Like after you finished it, you really need to give yourself like a couple of days to wrap it up. Now my goal here was not to have to weave in any ends and I almost gave myself a bigger task by wanting to turn those ends into something beautiful, but it's totally gonna be worth it at the end. That's what I keep telling myself. So I'm going to push through. So let me bring you a little bit closer and show you what I was able to accomplish last night. What made the most sense to me was to do this whole thing in stages. So you saw me kind of figuring out what type of tassels I wanted to do. We landed on the twisted tassels. We're good to go there. But now I need to set that up on both sides of this pretty big blanket. Phase one last night was to actually tie the tassels themselves. So I went through and essentially every five rows, I pulled whatever ends were available at that point, pulled those together, and I wanted to have at least 16 strands in each tassel. Some spaces had like three ends for me to work with, some spaces had like 10 ends for me to work with. So I made additional strands of yarn to thread into the actual tassel so they're all a uniform size. And I wanna show you what I used to make my tassel threads. My school yearbook, I still have it. Class of 04, Southfield Lathrop, go Chargers. <laughs> There's a picture on the inside here, and that's me right there looking grumpy as heck. Yeah, there I am. So there's me <laughs> looking mad. Then I also found my actual photo. This doesn't even look like me. So there I am. Here I am. Does that like look like me? A little Saudi rights here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but this actually ended up being the perfect size to make the tassels the length that I need them to be. Now that I'm fringing for dear life, it's a good time to tell you a bit about my 2024 temperature blanket plans because you know I be having plans. So I launched Happy Place Yarn in collaboration with Hobie back in the summer of this year. And thankfully I got a whole bunch of that yarn for my private stash because certain colors sold out so quickly. <laughs> I ended up giving a good bit away to family and friends and I made this epic pegboard wall to show off all the colors but I also saved plenty for my next temperature blanket. Now do you remember my linen stitch squares blanket that I made back in 2021? Yep we're going right back there. I picked 12 of my favorite colors from the Happy Place Solid collection and if you'd like a peek at those check out the video that just popped up in the corner. I'll be returning to my normal schedule stitching from January 1st to December 31st and also keep in mind that next year is a leap year. It's pretty surreal to say that I'm about to make a temperature blanket with my own yarn. The Happy Place collaboration was hands down a highlight of 2023 and I am so excited to make it a big part of my 2024. So I figured out what my toxic trait is. I get to like 95% done on my projects and then like I lose every ounce of motivation that it takes to just finish what I started literally a year ago. But no, seriously, I, I have one, two, three, four, six tassels left to do. And for the last 20 minutes, I have watched this episode of season seven of All Stars and um, Jinx Monsoon is like a Snatch Game queen. Like I think we can all agree. I also have been talking to my friends about what we're doing for Friendsmas. We're all gonna come over to my house, do signature cocktails, play some games, a lot of fun. You know, in all that time, I could have finished these six tassels, but like sometimes you gotta take a break and come back around to it. <laughs> Let's finish these last six tassels and then um, I'm really excited to show this to you. Here we go.
Alrighty friends, now is the time. You've waited long enough, so have I. So I have adjusted the frames for a second so I can give you the true slow motion moment that you deserve. Ladies and gentlemen, here is my 2023 temperature blanket masterpiece. Can you believe, can you, can you believe how gorgeous she is from the bottom to the top? Truly, look at her, look at, 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 look at. I'll back up a little bit so you can like really take in how flipping gorgeous this blanket is. Gorgeous, don't even cover half of it, all right? The tassels are tasseling. The flow on the tassels is truly magnificent. I absolutely love how that turned out. I wasn't sure about the tassels. I wasn't sure how that would work, but I definitely knew that there was no way I was weaving in well over 365, almost 400 days worth of ends. I'm really proud of what I've accomplished with this. and. So let's talk about it a little bit more. So there we have it, honeybees, my 2023 temperature blanket. I am so enamored with this. I love this blanket. I never really know what to expect when I enter into a temperature blanket project. So to come out with something this gorgeous, this fantastic, after a really stunning and exciting collaboration like I did with Sorella, I just, I have no words. I am so moved and grateful and just, it's one of the blessings that I think crochet brings, at least to my life, is a chance for me to kind of surprise myself, to go with it idea and then come out with something that's even better than anything that I could have imagined. So this pattern will be available for free on my blog right after the first of the year. I just want to take some really pretty pictures of it, write down all my notes about how this came together and make sure you have the absolute best outcome possible if you decide to make this project as well. So if you're not on my email list already, I highly recommend that you join it because those will be the first people to find out when the blog post is available. Now temperature blankets aren't for everybody, but they might be for you. They're super fun projects to have going in the background. So if that's something that you want to get in on, I invite you to take my five day free email course all about temperature blankets. I'm going to go through picking the right project, choosing the colors, staying motivated throughout the year, and so very much more. I know that this course has helped hundreds of people already tackle what feels almost insurmountable when it comes to a temperature blanket project. So I've got that link down in the description. It's completely free and it comes to your email. There's a wealth of information in that course, so definitely go check it out. Now, the moment that you've been waiting for, I am doing a giveaway for the full palette of colors that I used from Sorella for my 2023 temperature blanket. To win, all you have to do is click the link down in the description that's related to the giveaway, put in your email address, and I will choose a winner within the next week. Just be aware that this giveaway is only open to US and Canada addresses. So good luck everybody, and I can't wait to see who wins this and what you make from it. I already have my plan together for my 2024 temperature blanket, and I'm super excited to make that along with you. Make sure you use hashtag tentblanket2024 on Instagram so we can all see your projects and root for one another. And that's it for me, my loves. My DoorDash just got here, so I gotta go because your girl is starving. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye. <laughs>